Hey, Colin. Hey. Have you seen this new advanced sensor technology, C2, C4A series of strain gauge? No. It's coming out, and it's got pre-leads. It's a three-wire connection. Uh, you're going to ask yourself, why is it in such a big package? The package is, now has 10 pieces per package, making it a little more convenient. Uh, all the same features that you would have with a standard strain gauge for micro measurements, gauge factor, transverse sensitivity, all of those numbers and thermal output are all the same. And today, we're going to instrument a back scratcher. We want to find out how hard you're scratching your back or whose back you're scratching. <laughs> okay, so first thing we have to do is use the GC6 as a uh, degreaser. And the reason we select GC6 is because it's one of our more benign uh, uh, degreasers. And we're not sure what it's going to do to the surface finish on this, so we're uh, going to use the, the more benign degreaser first. And he's got it very well degreased. Now let's do a lighter braid with a 320 grit dry. This is our SCP-2, silicon carbide abrasive paper. And we just want to break the shine, and, and this has got a little bit of a rough surface to it. The, the bamboo apparently has some uh, veins that are sticking through, so we want to smooth that out slightly. 10 or 12 strokes, it's not critical. We just want to take the shine off of it. And then wipe it, I would expect, with a gauze sponge and some Neutralizer 5A to pick up that dust. Just to get the dirt out of the way. How's that finish looking? It's still a little rough there, so we might want to... What's wet a braid with 320 a grit, and then we'll call it good. Conditioner? Uh, yes, conditioner A. The mild phosphoric acid solution, conditioner A, this is going to help to remove some of the organic components and do the final surface uh, preparation for the, uh, the piece of bamboo that we're uh, bonding to. This is an exotic strain gauge installation, <laughs> bamboo. Should be sufficient. Now take a clean dry gauze sponge and with a single wiping motion we're going to absorb the excess conditioner A and the little bit of uh, bamboo that we've brought up with it. I'd say the surface finish is plenty good for a, a gauge at this point. So now we'll take our cotton tip applicator and uh, we're going to leave it at 320 because of the, the wood surface. If we go to 400 it's more going to polish than do anything else. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take the conditioner A, flood the surface, and with a cotton tip applicator he's going to scrub the surface. Loosening any organics that might have been put down into the surface of the wood, the, the bamboo. A clean dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters, and a single wiping motion to dry the surface of the beam, or the scratcher. Alright, next thing we got to do is set up our gauge on our glass plate, so we'll set the scratcher out of the way. Oh yes, we need to use Neutralizer 5A. Sorry, Colin was reminding me we needed to use the Neutralizer 5A to get the proper pH of the surface so we can bond. And the Neutralizer 5A is currently coming in a white tip bottle. keeping me honest, Colin. Trying. It's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it. That's right. With a single wiping motion, he's going to absorb the excess neutralizer 5A. And at this point, the surface is pretty well prepared for bonding, so we'll set that out of harm's way. Locate your glass plate. A couple of drops of the neutralizer 5A and a clean, dry gauze sponge. Now because of the uh, uh, construction with the lead wires pre-attached, we're going to run the uh, tape transverse to the long axis of the gauge across the beam. It'll make it a little easier to uh, keep from damaging uh, the gauge. He's just going to slide that gauge out. You'll notice it's got a shiny side and a dull side, and this is a C4A Advanced Sensors Technology Strain Gauge. He's going to lay that down so that we can now at uh, attach the uh, gauge handling tape, the piece <laughs> He throws away the first piece because you never, never know where that's been. 
He's going to stretch it a little bit between his thumb and forefinger. And now transverse, because the lead wire would kind of be in the way if we went long axis like you would typically do, he's going to run the tape transverse to the long axis of the gauge. And as we did with any stain gauge, he's going to lift it up at a shallow angle. Going to position it in the location of the thin section there on the scratcher. And I would suggest another piece of paper mm -hmm. drafting tape here just to keep the lead wire from tugging on it during the install. This is just a temporary piece there. Now we want to expose the bonding surface of the gauge. Again, as we would do in any other strain gauge installation, lift at a shallow angle until you're past the gauge. He's going to tip it over so he can get the, the neutralizer, or excuse me, the catalyst C on the back of the gauge and also on the uh, installation location. So now that we've got our gauge positioned and our surface preparation is complete, we're now going to put on our catalyst C. On the inside of the neck of the bottle, Colin's going to hit it eight to ten times, removing almost all of the liquid material. And then with a squeegee motion, he's going to squeegee across it to wet the gauge. And now we wait one minute of air dry time for the Catalyst C, so the solvents have an opportunity to escape. Okay, so now we've waited our one minute of air dry time for the Catalyst C. We need to apply the M-Bond 200. Uh, he's going to go, at, Colin's going to go ahead and open up the bottle. He's going to have a gauze sponge folded at the quarters and ready for uh, spreading out the adhesive. He'll put a single drop of the adhesive at the cusp of the tape and the, the uh, scratcher. And then he'll take the gauze sponge, squeegee it across and then follow with his thumb, or for in this case, his, well, his thumb. Now you'll notice the lead wire is heading out away from his thumb and we had the tape just not covering that lead wire so it had a nice flat surface. He might get his finger stuck to the beam or his thumb stuck to the beam, but that's easily removed by rotating it at this point in time. So he's gonna have one minute of thumb pressure. And if you're looking, it's a half, a, a third of a white thumbnail, that's the correct pressure, <laughs> calibrated. By the way, Colin, I forgot to mention, you know that glass plate you were using? Micromeasurements now sells that as GP2. Two pieces of glass, so if you, if you don't have a supply of glass close by or whatever reason you want to just buy it from us, we will sell you those glass plates for uh, gauge staging. Okay, Collins, so giving you a close-up view of the uh, C4A strain gauge. This is, as I said, an advanced sensor technology strain gauge uh, with lead wires pre-attached, a three lead wire system, which makes uh, good sense if there's a temperature change uh, in your uh, environment while that's happening, while you're doing the test. Uh, at this point now, we've had our two minutes under the tape. You'll go ahead and set the beam down. He's going to, instead of lifting the cape at a shallow angle, he's now going to pull the tape 180 degrees back on itself. And I would recommend putting your finger right down next to the gauge so the lead wire doesn't pull up. He's removed the gauge handling tape. And now we'll make a close visual inspection. I'm looking to make sure that there's a little fillet of adhesive around and it looks like the gauge is flat. No bumps or lumps inside, uh, indicating grit or some sort of debris. And so that's a very nice picture of the bonded strain gauge. At this point, Colin, if you would go ahead and introduce a strain relief loop, we're probably going to need to take loose that tape. Locate your pointed tweezers. And the handle of a cotton tip applicator. He'll put one point of the tweezers down oh, between three quarters of an inch or an inch away from the gauge and then rock away to form that inchworm type shape. He'll take a piece of the, a fresh piece of the paper drafting tape and just behind that loop he'll secure the strain relief loop. And today Colin we're going to use the M-Coat C as our environmental protection. 
We don't have to get rid of any raw, uh, flux because we didn't do any soldering operation. We can directly apply the M coat C. It's a, a, a room temperature curing RTV and it's going to have a bond line of, or excuse me, an environmental protectiveness thickness of around 20 thousandths of an inch. Very flexible and good for high elongations and this beam is going, or this scratcher is probably going to flex quite a bit. He's working in and around the solder junctions, forcing a little bit of the environmental protection up underneath the lead wires, trying to get rid of any uh, uh, bubbles, that sort of thing. And he's entraining the lead wire and in the, everything around it so that it's, it helps in the strain relief application. While we're waiting for the protective coating to cure, let's have a little review of the materials that we use during this project. The first thing was the GC6, the degreaser. This is a benign degreaser, 100% or 99.95% uh, pure isopropyl alcohol. We use the conditioner A and the SCP2, the silicon carbide abrasive paper. We use the silicon carbide abrasive paper to dry abrade. Then we wet abraded with the conditioner A. And then we scrubbed using the cotton tip applicators, CSP1. We scrubbed with conditioner A, then wiped it dry with the uh, gauze sponges, the, the GSP-1. Uh, then we scrubbed it with the neutralizer 5A to get the surface proper for pH for bonding. Uh, and then we used again the gauze sponges to uh, dry the surface. The catalyst C, uh, to call it a catalyst is really a misnomer, it's more of a controlling agent was applied to the backing of the gauge and allowed to air dry for one full minute. And then the final step before the uh, bonding of the gauge was the M-Bond 200 was applied. It's a cyanoacrylate adhesive, uh, instant setting, uh, fairly uh, um, popular for general purpose stress analysis work. And finally, as an environmental protection because of the possible elongations and the lack of reinforcement that we want on this particular application, we're going to use our M-Coat C. It's a, uh, room temperature vulcanizing ru uh, rubber, uh, which is benign and doesn't affect the strain gauge electrically or mechanically.